Hello, and welcome to another episode of Bare Bones Wargaming, a show with no bells, no whistles, no frills, just a man, a camera, and his game. On this episode, we're going to continue our play from World of War Magazine number 61, the newest one that just came out, the August-September issue, The Peaks of the Caucasus. Alright, now, when I last left you, not to sound like a soap opera, but when we last saw things, uh, the Germans were basically getting cranked up, moving along. Uh, the end of that turn ended up being a bad one, actually, for the Russians, because they ended up pulling, with their very last pull, uh, a command pull, they ended up pulling a... Stalingrad activation, so things were not very good for them. Now, we're picking up here with the beginning of the August, or the, sorry, the September 1942 turn. So let me show you what's happened in both sectors up to this point. So what happened during August on the Stalingrad sector is pretty much nothing. A whole lot of nothing. Because again, the German emphasis has been in the Caucasus. Okay. So, as you can see, there's not been a whole lot of movement there. However, when we move down here to the Caucasus, let me come back out just a little bit. Oops, wrong direction. There we go. As you can see, got across the Don here, and now the Germans are driving. Captured one of the oil fields here at Mykop. Haven't got the unit down, the repair units haven't got them across the Don to get down there so they can go ahead and try to get that oil field built up and the Russians as you can see are trying to create this defensive perimeter here to hang on to the situation at this point in time and of course for the Germans this is a race against time what I'm hoping to do here both in September and October is continue to push down here into the Caucasus but also maybe take some of these units and start to exploit this hinge area here between the two. Now that might be a little difficult to do, we shall see, but remember one of the important rules in this game is that you can never, ever, ever move directly from one enemy zone of control to another. It is, to use a good German word, verboten. So keep that in mind. Um, that makes things interesting as you play the game. Okay, so here we go with the September turn. So we'll start right off the bat with the Command Cups. Now, the Germans have to add into their cup the marker from De Fuhr into here. So I'll add that into the cup, shake it up. The Soviets have new, no new ones to add in. And another thing I like to do, and this is just my own personal preference, and you know, sometimes solo you forget things. Um, so what I like to do is, since I put the markers over here that are activated on this little piece of the Caucasus box, I go ahead and bring over the reinforcements here because I make two columns here. I don't know if you're able to see that in the last video or not. And then that way I remember, you know, what's available, that kind of thing there. Okay, so that's the command markers there. And then the reinforcements, of course, come with activations. But like I said, I'm just setting that up there. And again, I'm gonna do a die roll to determine who has to use their refo the refit points first. And in this particular case, it is the Germans. So we look at our track here for September of 1942, and the Germans get three other refit points. I had saved two prior, so now I'm back up to five, which I'm going to need. Unfortunately, in the Caucasus last turn, although I made a lot of nice gains, uh, a lot of my mechanized units and my Panzer Corps took a beating, unfortunately. So, again, being able to trace to a supply source, which right here, there is a depot here, within three hexes because it's still summertime and again the charts actually very way very well laid out uh, for this game the only thing that's a little bit of a pain in the neck is the terrain chart because no matter if you're playing the soviet side or the german side you kind of have to crane your neck to to see but again i mean if you're an old hand at wargaming it's not a big deal it's it's pretty standard stuff okay so I'm going to go ahead and now I need one refit point if it's not an enemy zone of control, which basically I tried to set things up last turn to make sure that would not be the case. So again, tracing three hexes from here. Here is one. Flip the 14th core back to full strength. And flip this core, because again, two, back to full strength as well. Oh, and one other thing too, I have to admit I like about this game, and I'm going I'm to zero in on this just because I like it, is I this game also has... There it is. It also has my beloved 24th Panzer Corps 
Uh, I don't know why I got such an attachment to the 24th Panzer Corps, but when I was a much younger man, <clears throat> late teenager, uh, early college, um, I played a lot of Russian Front. I found that years ago. Uh, I went to IUP, the Indiana University of Pennsylvania, and for my undergrad, and they had a store which no longer exists called Patty's Paperbacks. And it wasn't just paperback books, it was also a comic book store, and they had some games. And in the back, one of the games they had was Russian Front, and I was like, dude, this is totally cool. And I got attached to 24th Panzer Corps. I'm not sure if I got attached because once I started reading about the Russian Front a lot, is because uh, the, the Panzer Corps under von Schweppenberg was just really active. It was one of Guderian's workhorse units, and they did so much. But any game that has a 24th Panzer Corps in it, it's okay um, by me. I really, really do enjoy it. The only thing that's sad is it's only a 646 instead of an 866, so clearly a depleted unit in this campaign. Okay, so enough digression there about the 24th Panzer Corps. So I've got three refit points left. Now, I do have one of my air units took a beating. Um, that's something I didn't show last time, and I want to show this time to you because um, I've got a full battery this time, so we should be able to do everything. So I might want to save points because you can't refit an air unit until it's completely eliminated. So that's one of the things you have to watch out for here in the game. But you know what? I have three replacement points. I'm going to spend one and get myself another one of these support markers. So let's see. What did I pull? And up. Oh. Okay, good. This is one that gives me a plus one attack column shift when I need it. Okay, I'm going to save the other two for for the future because I may I may need them. Okay. All right, the Russian side. Putting on my Russian general hat here. Have myself a little glass of sipper of vodka. Here we go. Uh, let's see. Get four refit points. Well, they had two left over because they pulled last month. They pulled the Comrade Stalin directive. And uh, Commandant Stalin gives you two extra replacement points. So I actually have six. Okay. Now, for the Russians, this might be a little trickier. But again, uh, remember, zones of control are not negated by friendly units. So the Russians needing two lines, two hexes to a railhead that leads to a supply source, that is tricky business here with that. But I think I can do it down here in the Caucasus because obviously this is going to be the main theater of action. So let's see here. I can go one, two this way. Wouldn't be able to go over that mountain because that would be prohibited. But then these guys will trace all the way down. Oh, by the way, one thing too with reinforcements I made a mistake on last time. I wish to clarify and fix here in this episode is the Russians can bring units into the Caucasus front. They have to bring them in via Baku because Baku is a supply source. So I did mess that up. Just so you know, so it isn't just strictly north of the Caspian. Um, you also can do it down at Baku, which I did, which is why the Russian forces are so thick here right now. Okay, so let me flip these guys. So that's one, and then these guys can trace to this railhead. That's two, three, and four. So that's four of the six. It takes it down to two. Now, should I try to bring in... You know what? I will try to bring in an eliminated unit so I can show you how that works. So let's do that. I'll spend the last two Russian points. And let me show you the refit table here. Because this is where life gets a little tricky with replacements. Okay? So whenever you rebuild a unit, which will then come in as a reinforcement, you have to roll the die. So we roll the Soviet die, and it is a two. So, for the Soviet and Axis Allies comment, column, that is one turn from now. So these guys will actually not become available until October of 42. So, you take a little bit of a chance, but notice the Soviets can always get something back immediately if they get lucky. On the other hand, the Germans are always going to be delayed. And yes, it is possible with fail to not get something back. So, keep that in mind. Okay, so we're all done refitting people. So now the Germans have the initiative through October of 1942. So the Germans will pull the first command marker. And remember, when you pull it, you have the option to play it or to pass. But if both players pass, the turn is over. So obviously the Germans do not want to risk that here. And this time the Germans' command limit is down to four. So I only get to pull four markers for the Germans.
Oh, yeesh. So, the Fuhrer is getting involved in nonsense. So, down here, we have our chart, which tells us what that will involve. So, the Fuhrer order affects both sectors. German units that begin the movement phase in an enemy zone of control cannot move. But I do get one extra replacement point, so there's a happy thought. <coughs> but now I can't reshuffle some of these units to try and launch some attacks if I wanted to reshuffle them. Okay. So. Um... Yeah, okay. So I am able to activate at least both sectors, so that's good news to know. Okay. Because the plus symbol on the counter, if you saw it there a second ago, that one, <coughs> excuse me, that one will allow you to, um, will allow you to activate both with the plus symbol. So C plus S, Caucasus, and Stalingrad. But again, I can't move anybody that's already in a zone of control. Alright, well... Let's focus down here now on the Caucasus then. So let's get rolling here. Um, i got to watch my flank, as always. So what I'm going to do is... You always have to watch your flanks. I'm going to bring... Okay, I'm going to bring these two Panzer Corps up into here. So I want to try and pound into here someplace. Oh, wait. Sorry. I almost forgot. Ah, I don't want to do any reinforcements just yet. But I do want to place my area. It's getting ahead of myself. So let me bring my air units in. Okay, I want to blast this. I want to keep pressing here. I want to blast... Hmm. I'm trying to blast these guys, and then I want to blast these guys. So I'm committing all my air units again to the Caucasus sector, because again, basically I'm trying to overwhelm the Caucasus sector, knock out Baku, knock out Astrakhan, and then turn north will be my plan. Okay, now I can go ahead and move. So I'll move these two up to here. I will take this one Hungarian unit and move it into my cop. One, two, and three. Okay, this railhead is going to move to here. One, two on these guys. I do have this truck available, so I need to get that. One, two, down to there. These guys can finally cross the Dawn. These guys will be ready next time. I can't move these guys into here because you can't stack the Axis Minor allies won't stack with each other. You know, some of these folks, like the Romanians and Hungarians, definitely did not get along. And that's probably putting it mildly to be completely honest about it all. Um, it's just the Stalingrad front. I just really... I'm not feeling the need to do much here. Uh, although I probably do want to shift this down a little bit. Because now that the Russians are going to be starting to get more troops, I want to be careful. Because remember, if you're not within range of a supply source, then you will get a negative column shift for every unit involved in the combat that is not in supply. That's a big, big um, difference, too. Rather than just a single column shift, like you do sometimes with other war games, it's going to be for all of them. So, yeah, let me move these guys, one, two, over to here. And what do I got? I got a couple of Romanians. No, those are Italians. I'm pretty sure they're Italians. Okay, let's do this then. I'm going to go ahead and move these guys out. One, two. And I'll move these guys one, two. Oh, nope. Hold on. I cannot do that. All right? They can't. They started to turn on the zone of control. The other ones... Um, let's see. The other ones... No, the other ones... Uh, no, those guys were fine because they were stacked here. They weren't in enemy zone control. Okay. All right. All right. Let's get some attacks going on here. Okay. So I'm going to start here because I want to be able to trace through here. And right now, again, the zone of control would not allow me to trace. And it's not negated by friendly units. Okay. So I've got 14 and 3 is 17. 17 to 3, so that's 5 to 1, and then with my air unit, that'll take me up to 600% altogether. It's a 2. Ah, oh, I've been getting a lot of low rolls lately. That's Defender Panics. Well, okay, good news and bad news on that. The good news is they're hightailing it big time. They're going to retreat to two hexes. However, they cannot retreat 
safely because this is zone of control, this is zone of control. So what happens in the game is if you cannot retreat safely, you must lose a step. So they will retreat into here, get flipped, and then go here, but you can't overstack. The Russians cannot stack in this game. So we'll move them into there, and I will advance these Panzer Corps into here. Remember, the air unit stays put the whole time. So that opened up this line, which is what I wanted to do, three hexes. So now I'll have these guys attack at 16, 2, 6. That'll be it. 200%. Ooh, maybe I shouldn't have done this. Well, I already declared it, so I'm going to hold myself to it. Because the river is going to give one shift. Rough terrain is going to give two shifts. But I get two shifts back for the air unit. So that's only on the 150, 199% column. Yikes. I haven't had any fives and sixes lately. Toward the end of last month, with my last activation, the caucuses, I was getting all these ones and twos. And I was just like, dude, what is this? Ah, there we go. A five. That's what I really needed here. Again, it's Defender Panics, so that's fine. So they will need to retreat two hexes. Now, they won't be able to retreat into the high mountain hexes. One, two. And they'll have to retreat one more. And I will send my panzers into this rough terrain here. But I do need to watch my flank here. i got to get some of these minor Axis ally dudes down here because now I'm running into trouble. But again, having them watch my flanks, if you know your history, that's risky business. Dun, 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 dun. Oops, sorry. Something else. All right, over here. We can trace. One, two. One, two, three. So we're good. Okay, so that is 11, 15 to 7. That's 200%. And air power will take me up to 400%. No terrain modifiers there. Hey, there we go. That's a six. That's an overrun. Ah, I love overruns. Okay, so all defending units are reduced. Well, there's only one. So reduce that one. And then they're really hightailing it. One, two, three. They ran for their lives. Perfect. As Eartha Kit would say, that was perfect. Alright, and I will advance both of these guys into here. So next turn, I'll be able to hopefully attack if I can clear some things out again. And then over here, last thing, one, two, three, one, two, three, we can get that way too. So that's going to be eight to six. So that's going to be the 100% column. Okay. Now, the Russians cannot... Well, yes, they can. These guys got pushed back far enough. Before, they were in trouble. But now they can get pushed back. I do have the air power. That'll take us up to 200%. So, in other words, I need another 5 or 6. Oh, I got a 3. Yikes. Bloodbath. Ugh. All right. Bloodbath. Defender reduces one unit. All right. So, they reduced. Uh, the Dacker reduces one unit, okay. Defenders were not cleared, so they will stay in the hex. Okay, so, eh, it, it worked, eh, kind of, eh. All right, Soviet activation. Now, the Soviets this turn have a command limit of three. Let's see what they get. Okay, they have the Stalingrad sector. Trying to decide what to do here. Because I could do that this turn if I wanted to. Because I do have the Stalingrad air unit, which would allow a shift of one. But there's not really a good place to attack right now. Well, hold on. Maybe, huh? <laughs> nah, that would be risky. I want to pass with the Stalingrad sector. All right, Germans, for their second one, they pull the Caucasus again. Well, they pull the Caucasus this time around. Now, I will bring on some of these reinforcements because I could use some of these guys. So I will bring them into play here. I'll bring two units into play in Stellino so that I can go ahead and try to move them south and get them down to where they need to be 
in the action here. Okay. All right, now air units again. Okay, I'm gonna shift this air unit to here because I'm gonna try and pulverize those guys. I'm gonna try and continue this advance here along the edge of the mountains. But actually, you know what? I'm gonna switch these two around. I'm gonna bring this guy to here, bring the Axis Ally one to there. Okay, all right, movement time. So, one, two, I can move into there. Move this railhead this way some. One, two on these guys. The truck unit will stay there just in case I need it. One, two, these guys are hustling towards the oil field so they can try to get the oil field online. These guys are finally across the river. These guys here, one, two, three, four, and five. So, in those Romanian troops across. I'm pretty sure the light blue is Romanian. Okay. Jeez, this is getting a little... <clears throat> if the Russians can start bringing troops in, that, that flank might end up being, hanging out there a little bit too far. Okay, let's see what we can do. So, logistically, let's start here. So I've got 16 to 6. And the rough terrain, the air unit, they will cancel each other. I need big money. Three. Mobile assault. Well, okay. Not big money, but that's good. Reduce one defending unit, and defenders retreat one hex. So they'll go back one, and then two into here. And I can move these guys into there. All right, over here, my 24th Panzer Corps. This is 14 to 7, so that's 200%. Air power will bring it up to 400%. And since now they cannot trace the line of communication, thanks to the two German units there, that'll take it up to 500%. I smell an overrun. Come on, you roll a one now. Well, that's close, a two. All right, well, good news and bad news. Mobile assault is the result. That is good. I'm a potent, don't even know it. So mobile assault was the result. So they get knocked down. Then they have to retreat. But unfortunately, the only way they can retreat is the enemy zone of control. So that will destroy them. So they go into the eliminated pile. All right. The German juggernaut continues to roll on here. So that's good. Okay. Now, over here, I'm going to try and clear this flank out. Uh, I'm going to take the armored... No, I'm going to take the infantry. Three. One, two, three. Yeah, one, two, three. We're good. Three and 11, that's 14 to three. 14 to three is four to one. River will back, drop it back by one. Move two that way. They do have supply, so we're back up to 500%. On my ships. Five, nice, overrun. So they took a hit. And now they have to retreat three full hexes. Yep. So, one, two, three. I'm going to have them fall back towards Astrakhan there. Okay, I want to have these guys come over into this hex here. Okay, and then last but not least, I'll use this armored unit and these guys here. That's 13 to 3. So that's again starts at 400 percent. Now not everybody's attacking across the river, and then 500 percent, actually 600 percent, because now the Russians, because of this hex, cannot trace two hexes to the supply source, and all the Germans can still trace to that supply source there. That's a three, and that's an overrun. So that will destroy that unit. And now I could pursue a lot with my mechanized units if I wanted to. I'll bring them out into here. But I do have to be careful because i got to watch this. This is widening over here. i got to make sure that the Russians don't start pouring through there. So i got to be careful. Okay. All right. So another successful activation on the Caucasus sector for the Germans. Although i got to keep an eye on this here too. So there's a couple spots I need to be careful with as the Germans. OK, 
Okay, the Russians. Hmm. Now, I pulled the Zukov marker, which gives me a plus one. If I attack this turn. The only problem is, and it's both sectors, do I have any good places to attack? Now, I do have a couple of Russian air units. But I have ones on the Caucasus, ones on Stalingrad. I'd love to give that 14th Panzer Corps a shot in the mouth, but I just don't see that as being viable. I can't get anybody up there fast enough. Well, I could, but then we'd have to tussle with one of those German air units. But you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do it just for demonstration purposes. So I will play the Zukov one, which will give me a plus one. And I will bring in these reinforcements at Ostrakhan. Ah, I forgot about that. Yes, this will work out pretty well. Okay. So, one, two. I'll bring those guys there. One, two. Bring those guys there. And I will pull these guys out of here. One. Mm. I can't get them far enough. Okay, we'll leave them there as defense in depth. And let's see. As much as I'd like to be able to do that. I mean, I could do that. But then there's also the air units there. So probably the problem is these column shifts with the Germans. That's an issue. Okay. Oh, dang it. I did it again. I always seem to do that. I always forget to put down my air unit first. Okay, so let's go back and do that. All right, now, when you have two air units that are in the same area, let's go ahead and zoom in on that battle. Whoops, that's not it. That's not it. There it is. All right, when you have two air units that are in the same area, remember, an air unit has its own zone, its own hex, as well as the six hexes around it, then you have air superiority combat. So we're going to have that, and we use the air superiority combat table. So now again, the Russians, of course, are at a bit of disadvantage at minus one. But if they can roll high, they rolled a three. So they will lose one step on their air unit. So too bad for them. However, it will still be active, but now there's a parenthesized number. That means it would only be able to influence the hex that it's actually in. So let's start doing the math. Here we go. So the Germans, do we have... Oh, shoot. We may not have supply. One, two, three. Uh-oh. One, two, three. Sugar, we don't. Okay. So that's bad news. So the Russians definitely have supply. So nine to four, that'll be 200%. Okay. Germans don't have supply. That moves them up to 300%. The Russians have one column for the Caucasus air unit, but I will use this one here to shift it back to, to take it back to the 200 to 299% column on the mobile assault because the Russians do have a mobile unit. And then they rolled a four. Four is defender panics, okay. So retreat two hexes, they may pursue if they wish. So I will go ahead and retreat two hexes. Now remember, the Germans can stack. And then I'm going to leave the Russians as is for right now because I don't want to stick them too far out. I'd rather have them covering the approaches to Astrakhan right now. Okay. So that's how the air thing works here um, in this particular situation. When you put air units in the same hex, they're going to battle and duke it out for air superiority, and then you can go from there. Okay. All right. Oh, I could have used my, one of my defensive markers. For my Germans. Ugh. That's a bummer, man. Alright. So. Oh, wait. Hold on. That was a three. So actually, I forgot the last shift for the Zukov. Ah, good thing I caught that. Okay, so actually, they only have to retreat one hex, but they do have to get reduced. So that's actually even worse for the Germans in that respect. So. Yikes. Ow, that stings. Okay. And again, you can only use one unit. That's why I couldn't use the um, Axis Ally aircraft there, because that's not permissible. That's not allowed. Okay, so that was the Soviet Zukov chip. So, moving along. German's getting thin here, and they only get four altogether. Now, this one is the Stalingrad sector. 
I have one more Caucasus sector. But again, if I pass, then if I'm the Russians, I'm going, da, we will pass too. So, I'll play the Stalingrad sector. Even though I'm not really going to do much over here in the Stalingrad sector, except try to reshuffle some people here a little bit. So I'll reshuffle these guys to here. I'll bring these guys up to the river. Ah, but that's basically it. I'm not really looking to do much else with the Stalingrad one, because I'm basically holding still in Stalingrad sector. And of course, you know, you can do whichever one you want to do. Last time I ended up um, attacking on both fronts with about similar efforts, similar units. I divided up the AB guys. So, all right. Russians pool, Stalingrad. Well, the Germans have to pull one more. So, you know what? I'm going to pass. Let's see if I can get that Caucasus one. So, this is the Germans. They're down to their last one. Survey says, ah, the Caucasus sector. Perfect. So, we are ready to roll once again and move into battle. Okay. Now, of course, this is starting to get to be a little harder here as far as um, forces go and stuff. So, let me see what I want to do here with some of these guys. I think what I'll do is I'm going to focus... Whoops. I'm going to focus on these three hexes here. So let me shuffle these air units around. Now, technically, I could have left them there, but once I move into there for defensive purposes, I usually move my air units up. Uh, that's my own personal preference. The Axis Ally one. You know what? I'm going to leave it there for defensive purposes to handle those hexes in that space, just in case. All right, let's move this Supply Depot forward one. And then... Um, hmm. See, the other one, now I'm starting to run out of stuff here. So let's move the truck forward a little bit. One, two, just in case I need it. And these oil guys are almost at their destination. So that's good. And now I can bring these Romanians down. One. And move them in there. Move these guys down. Let's start over with them. Whoops, where'd they go? There they are. <laughs> All right, so one two and a half, three and a half, four and a half. We'll bring them into there, try to help out with that fight. These guys will cross the river. These guys will come down. I know I'm leaving this gap here a little bit. I'm taking a gamble. I'm hoping I can finish by pushing into here. I got to get to the other side of the mountains too. I got to get a hold of that. So at some point, I need to cross. What I'm hoping to do is get down here to Grozny, and once I get down here to Grozny, switch over and swing. Which actually, that's one thing I want to mention too here. Let me zoom in. Um, don't get confused. In the rules, it mentions the road and then the roads that run along the rail lines. The roads that run along the rail lines are imaginary, but this thing here, what I'm pointing to here, see the white line? That's the actual military road they're talking about in the rules, whoops, in the terrain effects chart. So just so you know. Okay, so, gonna be ready to lunge here, forward again. And then of course the Russians will be able to draw two markers in a row to try and get some things rolling as well. Okay, now, at this point, um, I think I'm gonna pause here. And, or should I do the combats? Yeah, so, okay, we'll do the combats. Let's go ahead and do all the combats. Then I'll pause, give my final thoughts. We'll wrap this up. And um, you can decide, you know, if you want to pick it up or not. All right. So, let's start here on this flank. So, one, two, three. Okay, that's good. One, two. All right, good. Yeah, because there's no zone of control here. All right, so I've got six, 11. That's 15 to six. So that'll start at 200%. Um, not everybody's attacking across the river, so that'll bump it up to 400% there. Oh, that's a one, ouch. Mobile defense, yikes. Okay, so one attacking unit has to take a hit. It has to be a mobile unit. All right, I'll do the German one, even though it's probably gonna be a pain in the dupa to get replacements. 
there. Um, the Russians will retreat one hex after the mobile defense. And I'll go ahead and pump these guys into here. Dang it. I hate that mobile defense. Ah! Oh, well. Nothing can be done about it. Okay, next one here. Got 14, including my beloved 24th Panzer Corps. 14 to 6. 200. Move it by 2 for the air power. They have supply. We have supply. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. A 6. Booyah! Overrun. Okay. So, now, thanks to my previous assault, Overrun, they would get reduced. They would try to retreat, but they can't retreat. Zone of influence, or zone of control. Zone of control now, so they will be destroyed, which is good. And now I will move these units further forward here as well. And then last but not least, we will attack into here. So that's going to be 16 to 2. Ooh, I didn't need the air unit there. Dang, I should have used it someplace else. Alright, but you always roll, even though you roll on the highest and lowest column. Because as it says in the rules, it's a deliberate design thing. Because you never know, somebody might be able to stand against the odds. But not this time. Okay, so those guys are defeated. My air power remains. And once again, another Soviet unit is trashed as I continue to drive into the Caucasus deeper and deeper. I guess one could argue maybe what I should have done with some of the Soviet reinforcements was bring them into the Stalingrad front and start to counterattack to distract the Germans and see, you know, who could get the better impact. Um, I guess that was one strategy I could use. Oh, forgot to put my reinforcements in. Grr. Okay, well, good news and bad news about that. These guys don't get to come in this turn. However, if that happens, if you cannot or you choose not to bring in reinforcements, you can just do it the next turn. All right, let's see what the Russians pull, because now the Russians have to go with what they have. So they pulled the Stalingrad sector. Uh, let's see. Should I try one over there? See? You know what? Actually, I think I'm going to. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to pull these guys here. Well, here, wait. I'm going to bring the Stalingrad air unit first. I'm going to track these Germans up here. So, I'll go one, two, and three. I'll bring these guys over. Now, remember, the Russians cannot stack, so that's a bit of an issue. But, um... Yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll launch an attack over here. Because these German units, one, two, three, are out of supply. All right, from the Russian perspective. Okay, so the Russians have seven to ten. Now, bad news is... That's the 50 to 99% column. I don't think it's less than 49%. Let me make sure. Again, math was never my strong point, as I've told you guys before. So let's just double check. I'm pretty sure that's not going to be below... Um, yeah, it's 70%. Oh, duh. I should have been able to do that one, right? Okay. But I have two defending units that are out of supply. And again, per the out of support effects... One column shift to the right for each unsupported defending unit. I have two of them. So one, two for that. Now, the Russians also have the air unit. Okay. Now, I don't have a mobile unit, so I'm going to have to do it on the assault table. But let's see if we can do some damage. A three. Bloodbath. Okay. So bloodbath, both sides will get a unit reduced. Okay, one, two. And if the hex had been vacated, the attacker could have advanced, but they were not able to. All right, so let's see what the last Russian marker is going to be, because they are only, let me double check. Yep, a three limit. This is the Caucasus sector. And actually, you know what? I am going to stop here, because this is going to take me a little bit of time to think this through. Okay, so some final thoughts here on this game. What do I think? Honestly, I think this is one of the better magazine games I've played in a long time. This is, without a doubt, my favorite magazine game I've come across. Now, I'm talking like chronologically. I don't mean ones that I purchased, like if I purchased something from 2012. But for recent ones chronologically, this is the best one since Crete 1941, which was also in World of War magazine. I forget what 
which issue, maybe oh, 47, 49, somewhere along there. Um, yeah, I would say Creed, Creed is a little better than Midway Solitaire. Not by much, but, but it is. Uh, but this, this I would definitely, I would rate this as an 8. I'd be willing to play this, whether by myself or against somebody else. The chip pull system, terrific for solo play. Uh, if you add in little things like I do with the refits, you roll to decide who. You can do it by the initiative if you wanted to. Uh, that works out well. You can play a couple extra turns with extended. There's some optional units involved here in the game. Uh, I really do like the supply rules, the unsupported, because um, it's not just for the whole combat. It's per unit. So you really have to be careful with your logistics. And quite frankly, you know, as the old expression goes, amateurs talk about strategy and professionals talk about logistics. So this game, you really do have to pay attention to your logistics as well as paying attention to your military strategy. Because right now, I have hamstrung myself up on the Stalingrad sector by only leaving one big German depot up there. And come winter, when the lines of supply are gonna be, lines of um, communication, Tracing to those depots get reduced. That's going to be a problem. So, but I'm boldly doing it for the Caucasus. And yes, I know I'm kind of leaving things open there for potential Russian counterattack into the flank there and possibly towards Rostov. But that's another thing. The reason I like the chip pool is you can take those gambles like that. You can take those risks and you can be like, you know what? I'm going to leave it hanging open, and I hope I pull my chip for the sector that's involved, or you know, activation in general for a game before I pull one for the other side. So in that way, the chip pool is very cool because it allows you as a solo player to play like a real player for each side, you know, taking your chances, being like, okay, you know, let me go ahead and do this, see if I can go ahead and gamble and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the rules are actually very well written to this. I know that there are some folks who, who dog on um, magazine games a lot, but I have very few issues here, okay? Now, there are some errata that's included in the rule book, but it's in red. It's easy to see. Uh, again, there's a couple pages here that just basically deal with, you know, extra things that you can do. Um, I will say the only thing I, the only drawback I have to the game right now is that initial casualty die roll, because if the Russians, let's say they roll six, on both fronts, because you roll one die for Caucasus and for Stalingrad sectors. If you roll six on both fronts, that's six units you have to reduce. And the Russians only get, what do they get? They get three refit points on turn one. And most of those units are going to be in enemy zone of control. Not all, necessarily. But even so, you know, that's 12 units and you get three refit points. I mean, you know, you're talking one-fourth of your force. That can really tip the game, in my opinion. Because um, the Germans always just reduce only one. German. German can't be Axis Ally. Uh, one's there. So I like the uncertainty of the refits, too, because you have to roll, you know, and see, did you get enough replacements? Did you get enough equipment? Did you get everybody to the front in time? Is all the units there so it's combat effective yet or not? Um, you know, I, re I really like that element, too. So I give this game a big, two big thumbs up. Uh, for, for gameplay and for interest. If you like the Eastern Front, I do recommend it. Uh, it has been a lot of fun to play. I hope that's come across as I've done these videos. Uh, it is interesting. The German air power is brutal at the beginning of the game, but as the Russian air power comes in, you get some lucky die rolls for those air superiority combats. You know, it can change the complexion of the game which is understandable. The attrition die roll changes for the Germans too. Once you get into the winter turns, instead of being a six, it ends up being uh, a five or a six. And again, if the Germans lose their air units, that can be brutal. So just kind of keep that in mind for the game. So again, if I was using the Board Game Geek scale, I would give this an eight out of 10, um, which I believe is, you know, good game usually, you know, willing to play that kind of thing. So, okay. So one last thing here before I sign off for this episode, and the thing is, a uh, little update on my flat top solitaire system. Still working on it. One of the big things I've been working on is the searches, because again, as I mentioned before, I've been reading uh, Black Shoe Carrier Admiral by Lundstrom, and one of the things that's really struck me, I'm almost done with reading the Coral Sea, which by the way, it, if you like biography, and if you like the Pacific Theater, 
this is a great book because not only does he do an analysis of Fletcher and his command decisions and basically take on the critics that have ha critics that um, have dogged him over the years and kind of belittled him in his role, but there's great detail in the battles themselves, terrific detail. And one of the huge things that's jumped out to me has been the misidentification of ships and the, how hard it was to find ships. So one thing I'm working on right now and putting the finishing touches on, and I'm going to try um, try with the flat top scenario again, some of my changes here, is I'm basically trying to come up with different modifiers for land-based air that's searching versus carrier-based. And part of that seems to be that the land-based pilots did not always do as good a job as the carrier-based pilots in identifying ships. So I think there should be some kind of modifier for that. Um, and I'm also going to simplify things and basically make search ranges from bases kind of like carrier does, except for uh, the Japanese Mavis plane and the U.S. Catalina because they're able to be airborne for so long. I think those ones I'm going to actually put on the map and move those units around just like you normally would in the game. But I think once I simplify that, um, I think I might have something workable here that I can share. And I'll, of course, do a video, show you my gameplay. And, um, you know, let's just see what you think. And, and um, we can all kind of go from there. And if it works well enough, hey, all those lonely admirals with flat top, because again, flat top is a tough game to play by yourself. Um, you know, but it's got so many great scenarios. It really, it's, it's just awesome. It has, I think, 10, 12 scenarios, something like that, when you get the back issues from the general, which you can download off the internet. So, you know, the whole information's out there. So that's what I'm thinking I might do next. I'm still toying around with Hitler's Reich. I've been watching the threads it is an interesting system. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it, but I'm hoping to do that maybe sometime in the near future um, as an option, too. Beyond that, I have to be honest, I'm not sure. So we'll see what strikes my fancy, and if it's a game I haven't shared, I'll share the game with you guys. So uh, I hope this will help you make a decision on Peaks of the Caucasus by seeing the gameplay. Uh, again, in my opinion, it is a winner. So... This is Tim Korsnark for Bare Bones Wargaming saying thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Probably, not 100% sure, but I'd say 90% sure it'll probably be some flat top solitaire uh, rule experimentation play. We'll get it out there and actually show how my ideas are working and see if they are working and we'll go from there. So thanks for watching. See you next time.